Um, this is a sculpture that I just made. Um, and I'm going to tell you about everything that was put into it to make make it. And uh, I'm going to talk about people that helped contribute to it. And um, both through materials and knowledge. Um, yeah, so let's get right into it. This is a branch of a uh, lilac tree. A dead lilac tree. This was pretty much the, the beginning of the, um, of the sculpture was this lilac tree branch. It was dead. It was dead lilac tree. Um, cut this branch off and I had it in the studio space. I had it at home for over a year and then brought it to the studio space. Um, and I had made a sculpture similar to this one um, back in the fall. And while I was building that one, I, could, I, I was thinking about this, this, uh, this staff, this lilac branch staff. Um, and wanted to make it into another sculpture somehow, somehow. And so this was the grounding force behind this, um, this sculpture that you see now in front of you. So, um, so that's the staff. That's the uh, lilac, lilac branch staff. Um, and the main body of this thing is um, chicken wire, just uh, just uh, paper mache, pretty much about as cheap and easy as I could make it. Um, and the chicken wire I sourced uh, on the job. Uh, someone had someone had covered their sod, their newly laid sod, with chicken wire to prevent uh, those those devious little raccoons and skunks prevent them from flipping that that sod up and digging for grubs and other insects and that chicken wire prevents prevents uh, those those critters getting into uh, kind of ruining that work you know I mean I understand they want to get their meal um, so you put the chicken wire in to prevent them <laughs> and they got to go find it somewhere else uh, but we got to keep I got to keep I kept this chicken wire it was like two decent sized rolls and I kept that chicken wire and Made the first sculpture out of it, and uh, made this guy out of it. I mean, uh, maybe that was the beginning, really. I had chicken wire, so it's like I gotta fucking do something with it. Make a sculpture, I guess. Make two. I'm definitely gonna make another one. So yeah, yeah. And so this fucker is um, well, he's on a block of wood here. I don't know. I'll do close-ups. That candle's lit. I forgot about that. Um, on a base here, this uh, this base, uh, my partner Kaya, Kaya and I, we went. Um, shout out Kaya, the first shout out, first um, contributor. Kaya and I, we went uh, camping, camping last summer, and I use this block of wood here. You'll get a close-up later in the video. And you can see with the axe marks. I use this block of wood here to um, to chop chop uh, other wood, <laughs> make some kindling and uh, for the fire there. Um, and it uh, makes a perfect base. I brought it back to the studio. Mo like this thing started with me. I just had some shit that I thought was cool, and I brought it into the studio. Um, and uh, I slapped those. Slap that shit together, and it's like an object now, an art object, a sculpture. Um, so yeah, that's the that's this base here, and uh, well, it's on a plinth. This doesn't count, which was at the studio. But this red square that you see at the very bottom of the screen is uh, it's an old IKEA table that my I took off the street. Actually, my friend Eric Daniels, who I work with, um, we both took these. We. There's two of them, and we took them off the street. Uh, I use this as a table, as per per its uh, original creation, um, 
And I was building this on this table, but I thought, fuck makes the perfect base. This thing was super unbalanced. Um, so I just drilled it into this fucking tabletop here. And it's um, pretty well integrated, I'd say. Um, makes a great base. So, yeah. Um, that's about probably what you can't really... The least interesting shit. I mean, everything's interesting about this, I'd say. I'm really, uh, really happy with this fucking thing. And, uh, yeah, that's why I'm making this video. I want I want to share the uh, the work that went into it. Not 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 the work as in like what my hands did necessarily, but the work that went into um, collecting these items and um, kind of talking about why these are these items are important to me um, to the work. Um, as far as the piece goes, you know, these are everything that went into this was just to create the piece. They're not important necessarily to the piece. They are the piece. They are the sculpture. Um, and it just happens to take the form of this fucking traveling, traveling guy that collects a bunch of shit, and that's, that's that, really. Yeah, okay, let, let's get into some close-ups. So, I really am going to try my best to uh, to talk about everything in detail that's on this fucking thing. Um, you know, some stuff will have more detail than others, but... That's just the way she goes. You know? So, um, you know, these paint tubes. I paint. So, uh, I finish paint tubes every once in a while, as, as, uh, as per the usual, um, I have yet to come across infinite paint tubes. So anyways, I, I, I really, I enjoy, I like these colors a lot, got the, uh, high roll red, which is a really nice color, got the light violet, um, that's the cap of the light green yellow shade, very good color. A couple other things, um, couple other colors, other colors, um, there's a car there, uh, I found that in a garden, I think that was a garden up in, uh, North York, or, kind of, North York, I don't know, <laughs> there's a bone, bone, that was, bone was a very recent addition right near the end there, I found that, golly, this, this past week, I think, um, Probably not, probably like a chicken or a pork bone or a beef or something. Most likely, those are the mostly the kinds of bones I find, if they're not uh, small rodents bones. Um, and that material you see around, around the base there, that's just some cork. Um, that's cork I've had for a while. I've had that since uh, my Oakhead days. Maybe 2018, 2019, kind of had that since then. Um, great, great basing material, great model making material. And we've got a steel cup. I honestly could not tell you where, where I found that. Definitely on the job. Big theme, big, big, big theme of uh, pretty much everything that I found on here is... Uh, has something to do with the fact that I work as a gardener, as a living. Um... I find a ton of shit <laughs> driving around the city, being in other people's backyards and front yards, and just being out and about. I find all I call all kinds of things, all kinds of things, and you'll as you'll see throughout the process of uh, this video. Um, some things I find a lot of. Some things are kind of rare. So, cars. Don't find too many cars. This steel cup, that's a one of a kind, baby. Um, so next, we'll go to this candle holder. It's right in front of me. Um, we got a chain that was, uh, that was tucked away in someone's garage. Um, was not being used for anything. 
pretty much useless except for art making, so uh, I thought I'd repurpose it. Mm. And uh, it's supporting this candle holder. And we were at this beautiful house up or Brown Gerard and Gerard and Broadview. And a um, little uh, little overgrown backyard there, but um, found found a few of these candle holders. I only kept the one because I only needed the one, but got this. I mean, the best part about finding stuff that's been outside for decades is that it looks like it's been outside for decades. So, you know, that's kind of the whole the whole vibe with this guy here is um, time and dirt, time and dirt. That's all I'm gonna say about that. Um, and then, boom! That's one of our special, special pieces we got here. Um, we've got a chain link, a test, a test chain link from my friend and fellow artist, uh, Danica Drago. They, um, they're making a full, a full chain out of this, and it is carved sponge, which they have dipped into clay and in the firing process the sponge burns away and this is what's left and um, they you they had to sew I don't know how well you can see that there but they they would they would break a piece off and then sew it together Danica I'm sorry if I got that wrong oh and we've got the cigarette butt there uh, my, my my studio mate and my friend my friend Siam was in, in uh, the good old US of A and he brought uh, brought my studio mate home some uh, some camel cigarettes so I had to try one and um, that is the result of it it was alright tasted better than the shit that we got I guess but I don't really smoke so this is an iPhone, a cracked iPhone now I have three iPhones one came from my old roommate another came from my friend uh, Devin Price, and this, and another one I found on the street. I don't remember which one is which. I think this was the street find. There's a black walnut. Um, they're so, so cool. I find, I have, if I collected all the ones that I find, I'd have about five billion, so I don't do that. Very recent find there, that ogre guy. Um, very cool, very cool. We were, uh, taken down someone's garden walls and had to dig all the dirt out. <laughs> um, and th that's where, those are the kinds of jobs where I find the most stuff. Where we're digging about two, two feet deep into the earth. Um, there's always going to be something of note buried in there. I'm going to blow this candle out one second. Um, and there we have a little piece of pipe. Don't remember where I found that. Probably in gardening. And there's, uh, holding up this butterfly. Um, garden find, of course. Um, some remnants of, uh, marijuana cigarettes. Some people like to call them roaches. Um, that I smoke in the studio. And there's some matchsticks, uh, from lighting this candle. These candles, I, uh, I burnt about four candles in here to build up that wax a little bit. Um, this thing, cold patching cement and uh, the Sheffield penetrating oil. I got both of them from uh, from my nan, very cool. This beer is, uh, is a, well it's a beer bottle and it's uh, from Chimay, Chimay, uh, Belgian Trappist beer. Belgian Trappist beer there, and uh, fucking delicious. So I had to commemorate that on the sculpture. It's a cool bottle, man. I love these small bottles. Oh yeah, also the lilac stuff. Very unstable. <laughs> Cause it's, I just sawed it off of the bottom all those years ago, two years ago. It's not very stable, so I had to screw this circle of plywood onto it and screwed that into the table. This key is um, was an old studio key, so I figure why not include it. Keys are a theme in this painting, in this uh, sculpture for sure. Can't focus on this little guy, army man. They're interesting objects. I'm not a fan of war by any means, 
But they're, uh, they seem like a culturally significant toy. A lot of, uh, a lot of children had them. Another key, top of a key. More matches there, and, uh, there is a micro, not a microchip, I don't know, some kind of technological, uh, circuitry. And on top of that, sitting is a, uh, I'm pretty sure it's a dog tooth. A dog or a cat tooth found in a garden. I don't know how the fuck I found this. Um, well, I know how, because I'm on my fucking, sitting on my ass with about a foot away from the dirt. And I said, hey, that's not plant matter. That's a dog tooth or a cat tooth or uh, some kind of claw. I'm not totally sure, so maybe. Someone knows. And there's a piece of a level, and it uh, actually serves a purpose on this sculpture, because um, you can see whether it's on level ground or not. Yeah, pretty nifty, huh? There's uh, two quarters, um, if you don't know, and there's two of them, and they, this, it's just, I thought they got weathered so interesting, like, I've never, it's like gray, like that's not a reflection, like that dark gray was how I found it. There's another army guy dying out with a googly eye beside him. Maybe about to be possessed or whatnot. And you've got a, a classic Coca-Cola bottle here. This Coca-Cola is made in Mexico. And there is a difference apparently. And that difference is uh, cane sugar, I think. Um, and if I'm wrong, then I have been led astray. So this is uh, the Rush Moving Pictures beer made by Henderson Brewing Company. My father purchased a bunch of these and uh, gave them to me. They're really fucking good. Um, so is the band. I really like Rush. I know a lot of their songs. Cool, uh, about a quarter inch brush there. Um, not entirely sure where I found this thing. Probably <laughs> out gardening. <laughs> like some things don't stick in my mind. Some things I literally just fucking take them off the ground because I saw them in passing and I don't think about it. And there's other things where I bring, and I'm like, for sure that is being included, you know, like, and it and, and it stays in my mind. And perhaps not the story behind it, because fucking sometimes the story does not actually matter. Just the object itself and the fact that it has come into my hands, and is now in a piece of art. There is a um, piece of wrapped up paper that says weed on it to imply that there's a weed inside. Um, and you won't be able to find out whether there is. I'm, I'm looking to see if there's anything behind there, but I don't believe there is. Um, and this bottle uh, was was it not, uh, a drink, but it looked like the perfect little potion bottle. So I mixed up my own little potion in there, and uh, it looks like it's mostly been drunk, I think. This guy is questionable. So, back to some more boring stuff. Cool objects, but this is a really fucking boring video. <laughs> there's a dime bag that I found on the ground. There's a seashell. There's a piece of fabric. And there is a bunch of nails in like a fucking belt kind of thing. Like for a nail gun, it's like a nail gun clip. Backyard. Um, bee and a mouse skull or rat skull. Definitely smaller than a squirrel. Found in a garden, again, it's like, how the fuck do I find these things? Like, they just pop into, I, sw I find so many dead things, like, it's actually crazy. Um, it makes sense, but like, no one else on my crew finds as much dead shit as I do. As much skulls and other bones and stuff. I seem to find so much. Maybe it's just cause I'm like, hoping that I find it, so it finds its way to me. I don't know, man. I, I think I'm honoring them though. I, I truly believe that I am honoring these these bones, these these long lost animals or they find their way to me. <laughs> and I wanna put them and, and I and I kind of feel like I'm putting them on a pe I, putting them on a pedestal of uh, like come join all these other instru interesting objects and, and have new life. Um, and that's what I think about all these objects really is I'm really just trying to give them new life, take them off the street, take them out of the garden, and, uh, and, and make them a part of a new story, make them a part of my, the, 
not even mine. Like I don't even I don't even think that this story held within this sculpture could be considered mine. There's so many things that go into it. So many people that have helped me work on this um, that it's just a self-contained like bridging the gap between things that I find interesting and then like things of the world that just are that are like begging to be like shown to other people. I don't know. I'm fucking stoned and I'm probably I'm rambling like crazy, but that's the whole point of this video. I just wanted to talk about all of this. Um, there's some cards. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Miniature deck from a fucking a Christmas cracker. I got the keys, 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 keys. Don't know where that is from. This is a little chain from a, little, a modeling kit. Not a modeling kit, I bought it separately, but. Two chain links, like so random. I don't know, I've had this for a while for sure. Um, bungee cord. I don't know what these ropes are about, you know. These things just get collected along my guy here and uh, various different uh, lengths of cord. There's not really all too much going on in the back here, but I'm starting to get to the main body now. A couple more of the lengths of cord here, different uh, different kinds, and uh, some of it we work with, some of it find on the job, some of it's old stuff that's been tying up like trees and bushes, holding back shrubs, or has been doing absolutely nothing for decades, but needs to be preserved. There's some bits of Lego. Go to a lot of houses where there's chitlins around, some children, live there, um, they leave their Legos out in the garden. So, I fucking take it. <laughs> Duh. Here's, a, here's where the painting really, really stands out. I feel like the, the textures, the layers, the washes, different fabrics. And we're back. Here we've got... Oh my god, I didn't even show you guys my best friend. It's my best friend. Um, I've had them for a long time too. And I just stuck them there. I found them in a garden. But I love them. Couple, couple, there's a heavy duty razor blade for use for cutting paper. And this razor blade is an old fucking Gillette, old as fuck Gillette razor blade. Like 70s or some shit hand plane that my grandmother, my nan gave me. So yeah, cool. Cool, 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 cool. Um, here's this bag. It was actually like, uh, it was like some gum. It was called like gold mine or digging for gold or some kind of thing. And, um, it's a great bag. Nice and weathered. This is actually from having the, uh, the candle burning underneath it. So, pretty dope. Basically just a bag full of old nails that I didn't feel like using on anything. But this, uh, this butterfly here, um, this fabric was given to me in a tobacco tie by, um, Connor. Okay, let's go back to the back. This is from a t-shirt, a Rush, and more Rush, more Rush is involved in this. A Rush Signals t-shirt. I believe the album's called Signals. Um, which is actually on one of my paintings. The other half of it, I cut it in half. It just looks awesome. <laughs> it looks so good. As, as, that's that's all I can say about that. Got a couple doohickeys, you know, to make this guy uh, seem a little more realistic. It's like a Toronto Hydro. There's no way it's gonna focus. No, oh, you can't read it. Toronto Hydro. Random tiny little tag attached to this wire, you know. I'm still collaging with these little things, you know, like all these little bits of plastic and metal. Like I'm trying to trying to stick them all together. Collage is not just paper. Uh, you know, collages, many different fabrics, and all, ever trying to fucking slap as much shit together as you can. Like, this is a collage sculpt, like, I don't, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? How could you not? It just makes so much fucking sense. Got a little SD card adapter. House, house I was at today, you know. Got another couple little things. I think that's an old piece of a, an airplane model. Old airplane model that I had when I was like fucking like 10 or some shit. I think that's like a pencil top. Old phone, um, 
back battery pack accessible you know what I'm saying um, this is from an old model actually this is from this guy a couple years got that a couple years ago now this let me turn this fucking sculpture around real quick this fan here I invited my cousin Joseph over an aspiring writer um, and he also collects random shit off the street He's more intrigued by um, computer parts at the moment. So. so he had this fan, this fan from a computer, and he gave it to me. So I had to had to make it to the sculpture. He came all the way out here. Um, this this thing, I actually sewed it. I sewed this together, like a little pocket kind of device. It's a pocket pocket holster for uh, for our little guy's uh, tools. Got a screwdriver, more like an awl, really. Um, got a uh, putty, got a got a, a buttering knife. Got a oh, I'm in mean, multi-use. These are all multi-use tools, you know. Got a nail, and got some got some pliers there. Pretty much uh, all you need, as far as I'm concerned. The head I did was one of the first things I did. So the head was made out of some. Carved out of some sandstone from um, a place that Kai and I went to, um, and so my other my friend uh, Jillian Tolliver, who's another artist, great artist, um, she lent me some tools. She is she carves things sometimes, so um, I borrowed the tools from her to carve this to carve this um, head. I did it all in one sitting, <laughs> and it looks kind of like shit, but I think it's perfect. And the face shield there is actually from a painting that I did in like 2019, and I took it off. These drawings are, I drew on that back then, and it kind of looks perfect as far as like a face shield, kind of like navigational doodad, you know? This little bell here was uh, with some of that sewing stuff that I got uh, from my Nan's friend, which I mentioned. Crushed GoPro. This was from a crushed GoPro that I found. <laughs> I have other parts of it, but of course the lens. I had to wait for that, to use that. Because it's just such a good little piece. Um, but I think it works perfectly on this guy. Um, and these horns. That's from like a gall? Or a burl? Um, basically, I think those are two, I think they're two different things, but basically it's just like tree fungus. The bark grows all weird, but fucking cool, and so it just came right off of this gigantic Norway maple. Norway maple. <laughs> These very, this Kai gave me this. Key, very recent find. Um, act, well, sorry, I did not originally find this, my, uh, my other co-worker he uh, he found this he didn't want to give it to me at first he was like oh it's probably the homeowners they might want it I'm like there's no fucking way this is the homeowners <laughs> it was like a foot it was buried in the ground like there is no way um, we got some nails I love the way this looks it looks it's I don't know like I just love it I'm gonna do it on every fucking sculpture I find so many of these nails. I don't know what they're from. They're from construction, of course, but got, got some Legos. Some Legos. Um, and a bike um, bike inner tube filler cap. These active surplus. They're from Active Surplus. And so are these. These are actually from Active Surplus too. And that store does not exist anymore. It is now the sec. It is now what used to be the second black market, but the only black market. It's got a gorilla in front of it. Fucking amazing store, but it disappeared like my second year at OCAD. Such a good store. You know, gotta have the writing utensil on deck, right at the hand, right there, ready to use. Um, Although, I realize now you wouldn't be able to grab that with your right hand. You know, he uses the hook. He uses the hook and... It doesn't matter. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. This chain. Put a couple, uh... 
charms on it. Of sorts, you could call it a charm. The teacup handle. And this hand, this hand was actually one of the first things that I made. Um, it has that kinetic sand. Never dries! Always fun! Kinetic sand to uh, shape the hands. Have it inside the glove. Got this. This is from a tobacco tie, actually. But yeah, this hand. At first I left it white and I thought it was a little too comic-y looking. Like a com like a Mickey Mouse type type beat, you know? So I was did not want that. So I painted it and I think it integrates much better. Um, and here we have a moon and a sun ring. I thought they were earrings, but it, it was actually just a broken ring at a restaurant. And here, this is actually a copper pipe that I... I found an anvil in someone's house. <laughs> I found an old, dirty as fuck, rusty anvil. Small anvil in someone's, uh... Garage. So I took it. <laughs> and hammered out this piece of pipe that I had. Look, just a cool charm. Um, speaking of charms... These are wind chimes! Find a bunch of wind chimes. Wire, chain, all found in gardens. And slapped together and collaged into a whole nother, putting it to a whole other context. I made this um, last winter. I was just experimenting with cold wax medium, which I pretty much only ever used twice, and this was one of those times, so I don't really under know the benefits of using it, or I don't know whether I can really integrate it into my practice. But um, I made this, and it's a cool like tapestry on an old skipping rope. Um, very old skipping rope, super weathered. Um, and this, this is, I feel like, the crown jewel of the piece. This is a raccoon skull. They're notified of a smell in the backyard. They, they said, oh, one of our pots one of our pots is uh, full of fetid water. You need to dump that water. And so we did that, and then we come back two weeks later, and we're like, oh, and that smell is still there. Like, what is that? And uh, we don't really know, and we're cleaning out the garden. We had to cut down their hydrangeas for the season. And what do we find underneath the hydrangeas? I'm not kidding you when I say a puddle of raccoon. There was a few bones left, including the skull, and just flesh and fur in a puddle. Um, so of course I did what any sane person would do, and I took the skull, I left it outside for a couple months, about four or five months, and um, let that flesh kind of rot away a little bit more, and then put them away in some hydrogen peroxide, uh, cleaned them off real nice, and then left them in the sun to uh, bleach up a little bit, but hanging from a nail and this old clothesline thing, pulley, it's actually on, it's a wooden wheel, which is nuts. This was from my nan, that green thing I got from my nan and uh, this was in it, so sick. Here you can see more of the, uh, the lilac branch, just so good. And last, but certainly not least, I got, in the same studio visit, where I got the chain link from Danica, um, I was actually at doing a studio visit with Akash, and um, they're a weaver, and wove this, uh, this was just a test for a future project, but um, yeah, I'm a, uh, I asked if I could if I could have something from their studio and uh, I was offered this and I ov obviously could not refuse and it's so beautiful I'm so glad I could include it in my work um, I hope they're okay with it <laughs> um, it's just so beautiful and it suits the piece so well there they are So, 
Yeah, that was probably not the most interesting you've ever thing you've ever watched, but all this stuff is fairly interesting to me, or it had to have been, because it made it into a piece of work, piece of art. And yeah, I'm just really trying to continue the story of all these things, and I think this video is gonna do a fucking terrible job of doing that, but I think the sculpture at least will, uh, say everything that needs to be said. So pretty much everything I just said, pointless.